What's going on guys? DJI just released their Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom today. So I went ahead, hopped online and ordered the Mavic Pro 2. And here's some of the upgrades that really sold me on uh, upgrading from my original Mavic. One, the features on both of the new drones that have come out, the Zoom and the Pro, are absolutely phenomenal. We have a hyperlapse mode that gives us four different options and it processes it in the camera. You can stitch together those in post, but it is way more convenient to have them uh, as well as giving us four different options. I think there's a circular, there's a waypoint and a free, and then there's the uh, course lock. The other thing was the active track mode they upgraded to a version two. And I'm really excited to try that because there has been a few times I've used the active track on my Mavic and it has lost the subject, even going quickly behind a tree. Whereas the new, uh, both of the new drone, the new Mavics um, have an integrated map system that it, um, it basically, it, it gives it foresight into where the motion is going to be and it'll catch back up with the object after it's uh, either rounded a corner or gone behind a tree or anything like that. And that's really helpful because it's really lame to get a good shot going and then someone duck under a tree or around a corner and you miss them just for a split second and your drone loses it and it kind of messes up the whole shot. So I'm really excited about those two features as far as the upgraded features. Now let's talk camera. I am really impressed with the, the portability of the Mavic, but I've never been super impressed with the camera on it. The Mavic 1 was a 12 megapixel camera. The new Pro is a 20 megapixel, which is the same size as the Phantom 4 Pro. But the new Mavic 2 Pro has the Hasselblad with all the color science that Hasselblad offers people, as well as the one inch sensor and the 20 megapixel camera. And I know with the zoom, they DJ is really pressing this dolly zoom effect and the fact that it can do 48 megapixel photos uh, with nine stitched together. And I get that. Um, and I think the idea of having a zoom on a consumer level drone is awesome, but it, they didn't really do much as far as the camera goes. And for me, I, I saw such a drastic difference when I started using the a Phantom 4 Pro and it's one inch sensor in the 20 megapixel um, than I did with my Mavic. So I opted to go with the Pro because I really wanted that better quality photo. Now, um, as you see right here with the zoom effect, I can get that with my original Mavic. I can get that with the new Mavic, especially since we're gonna be uh, having a bigger sensor size and more megapixels to work with. Uh, you, you do lose a little bit of that parallax and the idea is that with the zoom, you can zoom in and really get that background moving at a different rate than your, your foreground subject. And so if you're, if you're rotating around something, you really get that parallax or if you're, if you're raising up and you're dolling down or something like that, it could really look pretty cool and it will look great. What I love though, is that you can still do those same effects in post. Uh, in fact, I did a video on this channel of how to create that vertigo effect in Final Cut after you've shot it on the Mavic. So for me, that wasn't enough of an upgrade to make me want to get the zoom. Uh, I know a lot of people are loving the zoom and I think the idea of having to um, having to get closer to your subject in order to get some of those same effects, that is kind of a bummer, especially if you're shooting wildlife and you don't want to really disrupt it and I would discourage that uh, greatly. Uh, so the zoom is going to be nice for those sorts of things, but with the, with the 4K uh, capability and the sensor size and the larger megapixel on the Hasselblad, uh, I'm really, I'm just as, just as capable of zooming in and cropping in. In fact, they have a, uh, uh, one and a about one and a half times lossless crop view that uh, you can get those same effects with the, uh, with the Pro. So that's really some of the main reasons why I decided to go ahead and go with the Mavic Pro 2. So why did I upgrade at all? Well, in both cameras, uh, we're able to shoot a lot better video quality. We're able to shoot at a 10 and an 8 bit, a 10 on the Pro, 8 bit on the Zoom. And that's gonna make a huge difference when you're talking about compression and data that hits the SD card. Uh, we're also able to shoot at 120 uh, frames per second versus the old Mavic was only 96. So you get some of those little details. And again, if you're a hobbyist, I would say, you know, 
these aren't going to be a, a huge deal for you, but for someone who uses it on a little more of a serious level, we're also able to shoot at H.265 now versus the H.264 before. Um, and th that's not a huge deal. Again, the Mavic 1 takes great uh, footage and captures great photos and stuff, but there are some limitations to it that these little upgrades are gonna really uh, problem solve for us from the original Mavic. The other thing I love about this uh, is that you can pan the gimbal. And DJI did give us an upgrade in the speed and the flight time that we have now. So hopefully they will actually be uh, true to their word and we will get some more out of both of those. So why did I choose the Pro over the Zoom? Well, in 2015, DJI acquired uh, the majority stakehold in Hasselblad. And I knew that they had done that. I heard rumors, I read a few blogs, and see if they had done that, but I hadn't seen any uh, any Hasselblad mentions or rumors or anything heading over to their drones yet. So I was thinking maybe it was gonna be on your Inspires, things like that. Um, and then they released this, and I knew right away that, I, that Hasselblad was not gonna put their name on something that wasn't gonna be a huge upgrade. Um, so their camera is a 28 millimeter, and I think 20 millimeters perfect for a one inch sensor personally. Uh, it's a it's a, a 10 bit one inch CMOS and it does have the 1.4 lossless crop, which I'm really excited about. And that's about a 40, 40 millimeter focal length. So you can get some of those parallax looks uh, cropped in there. And it has the 14 stops of dynamic range versus the zoom has a 13. Again, not a huge deal, but hey, I'll take any upgrade I can get on that camera. Uh, the zoom is, is basically the same camera pretty much that uh, that the Mavic 1 had in it. It's still the 12 megapixel half inch sensor and uh, it's a um, 24 to 48 zoom crop. They also have a super res on the dolly which, um, you know, it's okay. The 48 megapixels great. Um, you know, I, I shoot with a Sony a7R 2 and that's 42 megapixels. Um, and very rarely have I ever needed to use that many megapixels. It's just a lot of room on the card. I'm not super impressed with the idea of having 48 megapixels, but again, I've also seen the photos and, and people cropping in and things still look pretty sharp. So if you want that, definitely go with the zoom because you're not gonna get that out of the, the Pro. However, you get a one inch sensor and a 20 megapixel camera on the Pro. With some of those new features they gave us, it's gonna create a lot uh, cleaner images and it's going to create a lot of more flexibility in our color grading as well as the hyperlapse mode and the active track all that sort of stuff that really is small details but for the operator they're huge so hopefully DJI is quick in their shipping and it gets here in a couple days I am in Alaska and so things typically take a lot longer to get here than they do in the lower 48 but we will see and let's wait for it to get here all right guys Here's the box, and because we're in Alaska, we use Ulu's, so let's go ahead and open it up. By the way, that's one of my biggest pet peeves, the fact they named it Mavic 2 Pro versus Mavic Pro 2. It's kind of annoying, but oh well, first world problems, right? So I ordered the Fly More combo kit with it uh, because uh, it's about a little cheaper than ordering the separate batteries by itself and uh, with the props and the case and all that and the chargers it's really convenient um, so definitely say if you can if you swing an extra 300 bucks it's worth having the extra batteries for we have it remote uh, it is a little heavier I can tell right out of the gate it's a little heavier um, and I noticed what they did with the joysticks is they made them removable which is really handy because I have broken them before so um, yeah not too bad though drone um, actually this feels a little heavier also but uh, that could just be me so yeah let's check it out and um, this it, it's a different finish uh, than the Mavic 1 I like it um, yeah it's pretty cool it's, it's a different clamp on the gimbal which is nice uh, I believe it's one I believe it's one clamp uh, so you just yeah oh my gosh that's so nice look at that Look at that, just one clamp, super nice. Um, and that way you don't have two pieces you're hauling around. That is a really nice camera. Seems to be uh, a little more sturdy than the Mavic 1. I have had to replace the gimbal on my Mavic 1 after a crash. 
um, and it wasn't it wasn't hard to do but it still is pretty flimsy this definitely feels a little more solid so that's nice uh, one thing I noticed right off the bat is that we can access um, our uh, SD cards without having to um, without having to unfold it which you know again first world problems not that big of a deal but it was a good idea for um, for Mavic to do that so yeah I know that they put some more bottom uh, some more sensors on it all the way around back up all, all over the sides they also added some LED lights uh, for us to um, be able to use as we're landing uh, if it's if it's low light so anyway yeah I'm just gonna finish taking these off and then uh, we'll get it assembled and check it out more so just like the old one you need to make sure that these are out first man this this just has a heftier more solid feel to it than my than the mavic one i mean the, they spring out nicely yeah boy i don't know maybe i've just had my mavic one for too long but um these feel great um <clears throat> Same thing goes for the props. Um, this is an old one. You know, you'll have the white for the the uh, white props and uh, for the white motors, and the other ones, the ones without the ring on there. Um, the blades are different on these. Um, I saw a review that the uh, that it's still a little bit louder than the than the uh, the platinum, but um, these are still pretty quiet. So uh, excited, I need to follow, there we go. Um, yeah, the, uh, the batteries feel um, bigger and I think, I think this drone is a little bit heavier. Um, the batteries are bigger, I noticed when I took them off. Um, they're just thicker, so uh, not, a, not, not a bad thing, especially it gives us more flight time. That's not bad at all pretty cool um, yeah that's a uh, that's about it for this I, it is a little bit longer um, and we will test it out with uh, against my other um, my other Mavic but I'm I'm pretty impressed with this this definitely has a good feel to it uh, different texture on the finish which is nice got some vents back here some intakes here um, definitely have the sensors on the sides back here and on the back now I did uh, read that the sensors only work in a program mode, um, but that's okay. It's it's not that big of a deal. If, if you are used to the Mavic Pro One, and it's it's a, a drone that you enjoy flying, and you're you're getting uh, well versed at flying it and its functionalities, this is going to be a huge upgrade um, because you're still going to, if you have the talent to fly and you're not reckless with it, then um, there's going to be very few instances where you actually will need the sensors. A lot of times if I'm getting intricate shots, either flying between, um, you know, palm trees like I was doing in this shot, then uh, I just turn the sensors off anyway because I'm flying too too far too fast with them anyway so it's really not that big of a deal um, but you know more sensors are nice just gonna have to turn them off sometime anyway uh, another thing guys is if you've never flown a drone before and this is your first drone um, first bit of advice is be super careful be patient but you'll notice on the controls there are no joysticks except they are they're tucked in there in the bottom you can see right here so you just pull them out and you screw them in easy like that that's pretty nice and they are they are conveniently located right after you open up the um, the phone holder um, close them back down they're on there everything else the other thing is these have the octo sensor too um, which is supposedly going to give us some better um, signal and strength um, transmission we'll see about that um, I'm not sure uh, I'm not real uh, pleased with the Mavic 1 in distance um, I never have been my Mavic's never flown I mean I've never officially flown it past out of sight but if I were to try to fly it let's say three and a half four miles it really gets choppy um, so that's that's something that you got to watch out for um, is the transmission signal but we'll see how this does and if this really is an improvement on it um, that's it guys let's go let's go have fun and test it out